Welcome to our online. We're now finally ready to look at the binomial probability function, the methodology to calculate the probability in more complicated situations where multiple coins are tossed, or in this case, in our example, we have, we have a quiz with five questions. We're not going to read the questions, we're just going to randomly answer the questions. Each question has three possible answers, only one of those three is correct. So therefore, in each case, we have one-third probability to get the correct answer and two-thirds probability to pick the wrong answer. Notice, n equals five because there's five questions. We're going to let x equal the number correct, the number of correct answers in our quiz. And here's the equation, the probability of getting x correct is equal to nx, we'll learn what this means, the probability to get one correct in each question to the x power, and the probability to get one wrong in the question raised to the n minus x. Now remember that n, since there's five questions, n equals five. And we're going to show you how to apply that, for example, when the, to get the probability that we'll get two correct. But first, we need to understand what this is. This means that we take n factorial divided by x factorial and divided by n minus x factorial. Let's do it in the case where x equals 2. So in this case, n equals 5, x equals 2, so we apply that. So here we have 5, 2, which is equal to 5 factorial divided by x factorial, which is 2 factorial, divided by 5 minus 2 factorial. So this ends up being 5 factorial divided by 2 factorial and divided by 3 factorial, which is equal to 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, divided by 2 times 1, and divided by 3 times 2 times 1. So how do we simplify that? Well, first of all, we have 3 times 2 times 1 here, and 3 times 2 times 1 here. We have a 4 and a 2, so 4 divided by 2 is 2, 2 divided by 2 is 1, now notice we have all 1's in the denominator, we have 5 times 2 times 1 in the numerator, so in this case, this is equal to 10. Now, we apply that over here. Notice, in this case, we're going to have this as 5, 2. Here we have the probability that we have a correct answer in each of the five questions, which is 1 third, and we raise that to the x power, x is the number correct, we're looking for x equals 2, so that's to the second power. The probability that we'll get the wrong answer in any of the questions is two-thirds. And we're going to raise that to the n minus x power. In this case, that would be five minus two power or to the third power. So this becomes the following. So this is equal to, as we saw, 10 multiplied times one-third to the second power and multiplied times two-thirds to the third power. And of course now you, gra you grab a calculator. So 1 divided by 3 raised to the second power plus 2 divided by 3 raised to the third power. So this ends up being 0 0.329. So the probability that x equals 2 is 32.9 percent essentially. Hmm, there's a fairly higher probability, almost one-third probability to get two right, because notice that to get them all wrong would be a fairly small probability, and to get them all right would be even smaller probability, but you expect the probability to increase when you get close to the average number of correct answers, and two would be fairly close to the average number of correct answers, so you expect that to be a fairly high probability. And notice, the most important part is this is how we calculate it. This is what we, know, we call the binomial probability function. We have the probability of getting correct raised to the number of times that we want it to be correct. The probability that, each question will, that a question will be wrong raised to the number of questions that are expected to be wrong based upon our request for probability. And then we multiply it times this. That is the weighting factor, so to speak, as to the num total number of combinational ways in which we can get two correct and three wrong with this kind of test setup. There's 10 different ways in which this can happen, and therefore that's where the number 10 comes from. And that's the essence of what we call the binomial probability function. In the next video, we're going to show you 
where this comes from in a more intuitive sense. We can see here that yes, this is the equation. I can see why that seems to be correct and why we get the correct value. If we do this for every one of the probabilities and add them all up, you will get one and none of the probabilities would be less than zero or greater than one. So it does adhere to the rules and regulations of probabilities. But let us show you why we get the number 10 here when we have the probability of two correct answers. And that is how it's done.